Welcome. My name is Gina Timberman, and you are listening to Timber People, a podcast about people who, like Timber, are strong, build and create, who gather us together like fuel that feeds fire. People who support structures of our community that uplift and protect. Hi, welcome to Timber People. I'm so excited to welcome my friend Tyler Traxler, an artist. I have um, just become aware about your work in recent times and love when I run into you to just hear a little bit more about it and was really excited to learn about your upcoming exhibition. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's great. Great to be here. Um, Tyler, I know that your work, you're a poet, um, your work is really dynamic and colorful. Before we start talking about the exhibit and your work, because I just have so much to learn and I'm really excited, I would like to talk with you a little bit about where you're from. Yeah, I'm from uh, South Oklahoma City, Moore area, born and raised there. Um, my family lives out in Tuttle, went to school in Edmond, kind of moved up and down the up and down 35 there. Settled in OKC. Um, yeah, grew up in right in Tornado Alley. Yeah, I say that um, you you could be living next to someone who has, you know, so like, this incredible story where we're from in Oklahoma and not even really know their story until we dive in and start really talking about where we're from, what we're doing, um, what our hobbies and interests are. And, you know, Oklahoma City is such a... Uh, diverse community. It, it's really great to learn about your history and, um, yeah, that you've been around here and I'm just now, you know, getting to to really know you. Yeah, I feel like we've we've talked in like little short chunks while like I'm at I'm at Stella or something like that and get bits and pieces. But yeah, get to getting to long form like discuss everything and the whole story. I was um, talking yesterday about, you know, just reflecting on reflecting on life and how it's like a blessing to get to look at your life as a story and like looking up on, you know, coming up and more like being from here. It's just, it, it's hard to separate yourself sometimes. Cause when you see other people's stories, you're like, man, that's so great. They overcame so much. They did so much, but now I get to like, look at mine in kind of this artistic way. And that's kind of what I use a lot of the art for is like, you know, reflection and, um, you know, sharing that story. So mm -hmm. outside of just the verbal like this, you know, how can you illustrate that? How can you, you know, kind of give people hints about it or let them form their own opinions through like symbolism and stuff. So the art's been great for that, I think, and coming to understand, you know, myself and also like where I've been, where I'm going, because that's kind of changing all the time, you know. Absolutely. Now, did you discover, did you always know that you were um, a painter? Did you always know you were a poet? Um, how did you begin to really explore um, those talents and interests? Well, I'll be honest, I didn't consider myself like a creative person for a while. Till, so I just turned 30 last month. Mm -hmm. I didn't really consider myself a creative person until I was probably 23, 24. You know, I kind of grew up drawing like maybe old Dragon Ball Z characters is an old yeah. <laughs> like anime show that guys my age probably know really well. And um, so I'll kind of give the rundown. I went to UCO, um, um, was in a fraternity and lived that whole little college experience life and was in my own little bubble. Um, I had a degree in economics and finance, mm -hmm. worked in a little spot downtown afterwards. And, you know, it just didn't, I'll never forget the day, like walking into the cubicle and like, almost like a existential crisis like going on in my head of like oh like this is this is what it's going to be like this is what I just you know went to debt for this is what I just worked for like and um it just wasn't for me so instantly you know I started creating like mm -hmm. I had a lot of free time you know in the corporate setting I feel like you know there's I was there for eight hours but four hours of work you know and the rest was kind of just you know bsing or like right trying to figure something else out and it led me to creating a brand called Outside, which is still semi-active today. Um, it's a clothing brand that's outdoor-based, um, sustainability-based, and it was really solar-based products is what I wanted to develop. So I got really into that kind of, and I was really leaning into, you know, business and development and all that, learning marketing. Um, that's kind of my introduction to email marketing, digital marketing, content development in any form. Um, and that just kind of, you know, eventually I got fired from that job. <laughs> 
because like they blessing in disguise. Oh, totally. <laughs> you know, I had, but they were for using company time to, you know, make t-shirts and whatnot. Like I can imagine that's, that'd be annoying if I was my boss, but, um, yeah, I took outside kind of made it, made it kind of pop and went back to serving for a while after that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it led me towards, it just taught me everything. It taught me how to do graphic design. It taught me how to make t-shirts. It taught me how to, you know, develop relationships, taught me how to do events, taught me how to mm-hmm. set up those events, how to run a business properly a little bit. <laughs> I was still updating those skills day to day, but, um, it was a great learning experience that, um, you know, I've put out five or six different collections with that. Um, and I had the opportunity through that to learn about, I, I got really into fashion at a high level mm-hmm. and kind of understanding art a little bit more. So I felt kind of boxed in, in that brand, mm-hmm. you know, it was outdoor based. It was very like, very like not, there wasn't a lot of room to grow as far as an artist. And so I developed a brand called within and without, which is a reference to, um, uh, Hermes, uh, the old mm-hmm. philosopher, and it's uh, the principle of correspondence. So within and without, it's like an equation equals nothing. There's no logo for the brand. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of an art project. And But through that, I mean, it just it further developed those skills to where I was making custom clothes and all this. Still Very not painting cool. at all. Yeah, no painting has come about right, in this whole right. process. Um, really just built that, had, a, had some cool events and pop-up shops through different networks, um, Started that in like 2018, and I still loosely use that that moniker. Um, but you know, it all of that that experience really honed my skills in like digital graphic and pretty much everything, but right. like pencil paper, you know. Right. But um, the poetry is probably my oldest my oldest love, I guess, if mm-hmm. you will. Like I've been writing since I was in junior high, and just like an emotional basket case and stuff. So, well, I think it's really important that uh, I love the names that you've given to your you know, pursuits and also Thanks. your business, you know, even just looking at how that journey began with outside, it's about getting outside of yourself, you know, exactly. taking that, you know, that creativity or even the emotion and getting that outside of yourself. So I really love the fact that your journey somewhat began with that, evolved into other ways of expression. Mm-hmm. But even today of using that poetry, um, you know, talking about being in junior high and getting yourself getting out emotion is so important poetry yeah. you know at that age was became important to me and so I love to I love to know that it's it was important to you then and it is important to you today as you continue to express yourself in creative ways mm-hmm. yeah it was it was yeah it was definitely a form of expression you know I was raised by all women so I find that I'm like a little more emotionally intelligent than maybe a lot of other men or a lot of people that I, I was raised around and stuff. So I was always able to like capture that. And that's always the feeling that I'm looking mm-hmm. for, you know, it's kind of fleeting. So that that's always what you're looking for through the art now is like something that makes you feel like you're reading a young adult novel, like something that makes you feel like those butterflies, even if it's sadness that makes you right. feel it. Like, so I always want to try to impart like that sense of melancholy upon everything I do, because it's not sadness in the sense of sorrow. It's sadness in the sense of like the transience of life, right. like the fact that things are just moving and you can't stop them. And it's right. like, how do you articulate those? It's a lot of words, but it's also a lot of just, you know, how you how you present yourself and like mm-hmm. things you talk about. Are you real? Are you authentic? And I think people see see those senses a lot in my in my work a lot. Right. I hope. Right. You have a really diverse body of work. And um, I love the way that you use color. And um, have you always used color in a similar, like the vibrant, bright, um, really, and you know, that this color is symbolic, you know, of different emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious about um, the evolution of your use of color and how you've incorporated that into your painting and other works as a designer, as a graphic designer and in fashion. Mm hmm. Yeah, it definitely started with fashion because, you know, putting together lookbooks, putting together, you know, fits, it helps you design um, um, just just different how different things go together. You know, it's I don't have like an education in color harmony or anything like that. And right. I almost don't I don't I almost think I don't want to, you know, because I want to be able to keep it kind of organic. And mm-hmm. but I think, yeah, I can't resist color. Like it's very right. hard. You know, I've made a lot of black and white pieces that people love and stuff. And 
I love them too. Like I love, I like everything I do for the most part, but it's, uh, I can't like, you know, I'll just be like, let me keep this one all blue. Let me keep this one all black and white. And then the time comes and there's 60 colors on the, on the canvas. But, um, I, there is, there is an element to it that will be part of like my next phase of growth as far as like really coming to understand these sciences and stuff. But, you know, I've only been painting for a year and a half. So that's incredible. And to know that you have this amazing exhibition coming up, I'm just, it, it, it blows me away. Um, in the sense that it, your painting has evolved so much over a short period of time. Yeah, and I, I mean, I attribute that to everything that happened before mm-hmm. because I understood I understood how things move, you know? Like, you're not going to necessarily get it right on your first try and being okay with that because I've worked through that in the clothing industry. I've worked through that with these other art projects. And so it allowed me the patience for myself to be able to, like, grow. And, and it's a little different. You know, my mom told me um, I was... So I'll kind of give the background on how I started painting. I was working at an art studio with a friend of mine, helping him curate events and helping him put stuff together. And um, I curated a couple of shows that went really well, but he wanted me to do to do a piece for this show. He's like, you're curating the show. You, we need work. Why don't you just throw a piece in there? And I was like, man, I don't know. I don't paint. Like at this point, I was like kind of in a creative rut. I didn't know where to go with anything. Mm-hmm. And he offered me that opportunity. And you know, I bought this piece of plywood like shitty wood and put it up on these saw horses. And at the time I was living in this, in a pool house in Heritage Hills uh, behind a much larger house. But I was in this like, you know, kind of rundown pool house. I live in there and um, it was staring at me from this room and it was on these saw horses, this board. And I didn't know how to paint. I didn't know what to do. And so I just went to bed. The piece was supposed to be due the next day. Woke up at 4 a.m., and there's like this like almost heavenly light like yeah. shining in the other room down on this board. And I just woke up, went, painted this crazy piece in like a couple hours and put it in the show. And it didn't sell, but it got a lot of like attention. And I really enjoyed it and like loved the process of talking about it. And I loved how it came about and it felt so natural. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was lucky enough to then after that kind of find people that you know, vibed with that. My, re- my really like gritty graffiti style aesthetic right. that existed at the beginning um, and you know, I just kept making, I just went through intense, an intense period of going to home Depot and, you know, I had no money at, th- at this time it was COVID. Like I didn't have a job. Right. Shit was just going wrong. Right. And, you know, I had like $20 and I'd go and buy like the wood that I could at like home Depot. And I wasn't even smart enough to buy canvas at that point. I just wanted to buy wood and yeah. paint on it and using my last money. And I was able to like flip like 20 bucks into, you know, a lot a lot more. Mm -hmm. And that was like such an eye opener for me. And my mom told me, she was like, you know, I think you're really going to like this. I said, why do you, why do you say that? She's like, because you know, you have full control over this in a way, you know, it's just you, there's no one to blame. There's no one to deal with. Like, you know, with clothes, you have to deal with printers, digital people and models and like photography and like all this stuff. And it's just me and like whatever I need to say at that time. And so she, she called it and was like, I think you're going to really enjoy what you're doing with this. And I was like, I think so too. So I just leaned into yeah. it. And, but um, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Full expression with the color going crazy with the spray paint. Like that was how it started. Just no, no putting every inhibition out of my mind and just seeing what came out. You know, I think it's really great that you had someone like your mom to encourage you. And yeah. that was a difficult time for everyone in so many uh, similar and different ways that um, and there were a lot of things ending for a lot of people with, you know, work and projects. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really great that during that time you were beginning something new. Right. And, you know, at a time when we didn't have control over so much, but you could have that sense of of control and, and creativity. So I think it's really yeah. great that you've had that support. Yeah. And I mean, I don't mean to sound like a control freak either or anything right, like that. You right. know, I went through, I also, through that, after that period, you know, I've worked through a lot of collaborative efforts and collaborated mm-hmm. with a lot of people. And I, luckily that people have wanted to, and we've done some successful things, had some really good shows and really good turnouts. And but, you know, I just really wanted to, like, kind of claim, yeah, claim something as my own and be like, you know, this is this is the beginning of Traxler, you know. It was kind of a good right. pla- painting provided a good platform. While I had all these other things in these ancillary mixes, there wasn't a platform that I could see monetarily that could provide right. something. And so this really opened up my world. And, you know, 
art is so subjective and like so broad that I could move I could move a thousand ways in just right. one segment of it. And it's really inspiring for me. Right. You know, um, relationships are so important with the, you know, collaborations, um, with the encouragement that you have with. I know you've made some friends down in Marfa, Texas and um, in in preparation and in um, really the opportunity, developing new opportunities for your artwork. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about your upcoming exhibition? Yeah. So I. I first went through Marfa, which it was kind of Marfa is kind of a storied place. You know, everyone kind of wants to or everyone kind of wonders what's going on. You know, it's a kind of a mysterious place in the middle of the desert. And, you know, I, I knew about it. I wasn't too, like, enthralled with the idea of it. But um, my girlfriend and I went to um, Big Bend National Park and on the way back through after camping there for a few days. We stopped through Marfa, went through galleries, talked with people, had great conversations I just felt really, I felt really inspired and, you know, they have a lot of, um, they have a good foundation for, for not just painting and, but art of all kinds. And and they have a publishing company there and they do poetry there. So, you know, I just felt really inspired and always knew I'd be back. And Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just kind of been manifesting ever since, you know, and I had, I knew that they had a project or a, a, uh, organization there that put on the Marfa Invitational, which mm-hmm. is a a large um, art fair, essentially. Um, I know they have a philanthropic side to it, and I knew about it last year, thought it was cool. I'm kind of at this, I, I haven't reached the level with gallery relationships to be invited or participate in something like that, that I know of. So I was just like, I really want to be involved in this. And so I knew it was happening this year. And the idea just popped in my head of, you know, just go do it yourself, you know, like, um, just kind of drop down, bring a, bring what you do here and go take it somewhere else. And I did make a couple of relationships there where I knew that I would have a little bit of support and that they understood where I was coming from. And I was very nervous, but, um, yeah, we rented a loft in the middle, in the heart of the city. Um, it's a pretty well-known space at the lumber yard there. It's an artist studio collective. It's connected to a coffee shop and a bookshop. And it's um, right off the main street where, a lot of the high level galleries are. And so uh, we have that for a few nights. My show is one night on Saturday, May the 6th. Um, and yeah, we're just going to install ourselves. We're going to do everything ourselves. We're going to mm-hmm. host it and, you know, just, you know, no expectations really just, uh, you know, it's a blessing for me to even get there, you know, and uh, get there with some art and with the person I love and like, just run it up. Right. <laughs> That's all we want to do. So Worst case scenario, you know, we have an amazing trip and we have connections, but best case scenario, you know, who knows? <laughs> well, and the courage and confidence, you know, it's like completing that first art piece. You had the vision, you implemented it, expressed it, you were successful. And even though, you know, it may not have sold, but you completed your goal. Right. And you, I know, are creating these works for this exhibit, um, you know, a little bit builds upon a little bit more and mm-hmm. a little. And so doing more and more with your artwork is, you know, going to a, a place that you didn't really know, you know, having that vision, implementing it and then um, creating and creating. It's really great to see. It's like a, you know, instead of the snowball, it's like the effect. It's the paintball effect. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like totally. an emerging, emerging. I like that. The title is really great. And the sun gazes back at you. Yeah. That's that's really interesting. Yeah, I just, you know, I'm very spiritual and I'm very like, um, I think that was a big part of my, you know, development in that in that time when the art started and whatnot was, you know, I was starting um, a relationship. You know, I was starting, mm. I was starting to paint. I was getting over like old pr- issues with pride I had, right? And you know, um, returning to serving and like doing what I need to do. And I wanted to, you know, through those studies and through these you know, understandings that I gained, um, I really wanted to like personify the power of the sun. Obviously Mm -hmm. it's a play on words because it's the S O N, not the S U N. Um, so I wanted to personify that, you know, through me, you know, I just wanted to, you know, we're going to be under the high West Texas desert sun, you know, but you're also going to be like in the presence of the sun, uh, me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just wanted to like shine as bright as humanly possible and, you know, bring what I could and again, you know, shine light where I can. And so Mm -hmm. it's just me kind of putting myself, you know, egotistically or not putting myself at the center of this so I can 
tell my story. Right. And it's quite vulnerable too. Um, yeah. Really it, sharing yourself. Vulnerable. Yeah. And I, but it, you know, it took a lot of it, you know, the hard work's already been done. You know, mm-hmm. it's, this is fun. This is getting to like, look back at everything and like now like decode and right. interface with that and, you know, put it and, you know, put it in front of people. And that's the, I, I love seeing what people have to say. I love hearing what they get from this piece. And I try not to impart too much of what I see into it, you know, before we look at the art or I have a show, but you know, it's, 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 it's so exciting. And mm-hmm. the sun gazes back at you. You know, I just want people to walk in and feel feel everything. You know, I want them to feel mm-hmm. everything that I felt the past two years, whether mm-hmm. it's good, whether it's bad. Um, I want them to feel it. I want them to know that I went through something to make this happen. I want them to know that we had, this didn't come from nothing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just want to, I just want to go as hard as humanly possible. Right. I think that's so awesome. And you know, that play on words that, that the sun gazes back at you. That's also about being seen. You know, exactly. and um, yeah. also your artwork, it's vibrant and, you know, the world is getting to see it. And I know with so many different art forms or activities that we do, we're often um, putting things into a silo of, you know, this is what I do here. This is what I do here. And I love how your work with your poetry, with an expression, with your painting is interwoven into the experience and yeah. that you're writing and you gave me this beautiful book of poetry, Art Buys Flowers. I just yeah. think it's so great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And so we're going to do, you know, so Sun Gaze is back at you. It is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to have a lot of works on canvas, large scale works, some small works, but we have anything from five foot by five foot canvases to eight foot by four foot. You know, mm-hmm. so there are going to be a lot of large scale works. Um, but I'm also going to have it as like a poetry expose. I have this book, Art Buys Flowers. The previous one is called Infinite Notions. Uh, and another one before that that was called Size in a Shell. And so I, the, the hope is that, you know, you can come through and you can see my life from the the past six, seven years kind of encapsulated Mm -hmm. in these books. And Art Buys Flowers is one. That's why I brought that one to you specifically because it it ties directly into this conversation. It ties Mm -hmm. directly into, you know, these experiences because the title basically means um, it's it's titled from when I started doing art. And, you know, I I was very poor. Like I had no money for nothing. I had no job. Mm -hmm. I had pride issues and going back to serving and whatnot and just like doing what I needed to do. You know, I was just being a little immature in that, in that, in that sense. And, you know, I, I mean, when my girlfriend and I started dating, you know, I would, I just always wanted to give her flowers, but I oh, like, yeah. I would spend my last dollars to give her flowers. Like I would pick her flowers, whatever it took. Like right, I, I just wanted right. that to happen, you know, and, um, art allowed me to like buy her flowers. And so, That's so great. once I like got past that and, you know, got a job and, you know, had a, a, you know, something to shoot for with the, with the art, you know, art buys flowers now. So now, you know, I can support this relationship. I can support all these things that are right. happening in my life and, you know, through the art and it feels so good. Like even that cover, that's actually Sarah holding a bouquet that we got. Oh, that's and, beautiful. Yeah. So I it, love that. it's so organic. And, you know, that's what I always want to do is just not, I don't want to contrive anything. I want mm-hmm. everything to be from my life. I want it to be because it, it just helps so much to see your life as a work of art. And I, I tell Sarah, you know, like our relationship, you know, our lives are the greatest work of art. This is all just, this is just a pigment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, art does so many things. Art buys flowers. I just love that. <laughs> art brings us together. It builds bridges. And right. so you'll, you're bringing the community there together, brought us together to right. talk and, you know, connections and to to really express. Um, how can um, how can people learn more about your artwork? And um, and really, uh, do you have an online presence with your artwork right now? Yeah, my, mainly it's on Instagram. So mm-hmm. Instagram is good for everything. Uh, I'm constantly kind of curating and curating it according to whatever I'm doing at the time. But that's it's at Traxler, T-R-A-X-L-E-R. That's probably the best way. Mm-hmm. I have a website that's within xwithout.com mm-hmm. uh, in reference to the previous brand I mentioned. Sometimes I, I need to be better about updating it, but, you know, typically that's where you can find inventory of things for sale. Right now it's just an info sheet for the sun gazes back at you. Right. But that's kind of a fluid website to, like, stay up to date with me. Um, poetry, all of my poetry books are available on Amazon, Um 
I think they're like 10 bucks. They're pretty cheap, That's but I've great. got four on there. Um, so you can just search my name or any of those titles and it should come up on Google or on Amazon. So yeah, there's definitely an online presence and I stay pretty active and always, I'm kind of my friend and I, my friend Niven, shout out to Niven. Um, <laughs> He always told me we came up with this thing called shameless self-promotion, it's SSP. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's why you see these things out at Stella. That's why I was like, right, put them in the check present. Like, no one's going to be your biggest fan. No one cares. I'm <laughs> so happy yeah. that you have. Yeah. So you just got to, yeah, I've just been hustling and trying to put it all out there. But yeah, definitely Instagram's main way to connect. You know, if I just like meeting people in person, you know, right. and these conversations can happen over over coffee or, you know, whatever. I just like, again, back to the organicness. I like that. I'm excited for you about the journey you have um, ahead of you. I'm excited and grateful to learn about where you are now. And it's just been a real gift to learn about where you're from and 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 what brought you to the moments that we share today. And yeah. I know that everyone will be seeing and hearing a lot more about you. So Tyler Traxler, thank you so much for, for being on Timber People and for joining me today. Thank you. It's a blessing. Thank you. Yakoki, thank you for joining us. Timber People is brought to you by the Possibilities Podcast Platform.